Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Singularity One on One. Singularity One on One is a regular feature of Singularity Weblog where you can go and see it or download it in full. Today my guest on the show is Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly helped launch Wired Magazine and was its exclusive editor for its first seven years. He has written for the New York Times, The Economist, Science, Time and The Wall Street Journal among many other publications. His previous books include Out of Control and the best-selling New Rules for the New Economy. Kevin lives at, in Pacifica, California. Welcome, Kevin. It's very nice to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Let's uh, not waste any time and jump straight into the questions. Um, I would like to start from the beginning, if I may, just like you uh, started your book at the beginning of the universe a few billion years ago. I wouldn't like to start as far back, but maybe as far back as um, a little bit about your background and more specifically how you got to be interested in the impact and progress of technology. I think um, the origins of this book is probably um, goes back to my own history and uh, being a college dropout, spending a lot of time in Asia where um, I was in remote areas that had very little technology of any modern sort. And I spent a lot of my time living with people who had very little material goods, uh, most of it being stone or rope and fabric and not very much high tech. And they seemed to be um, able to uh, be content with um, – at a certain level with all this material and I also was comfortable not owning very much and I came back and I rode my bicycle which was the only thing I owned at that time across America and I interacted with the Amish who are kind of have a reputation for dismissing technology and I had a lot of respect for them and so there was one side of me that um, liked to keep a technology at arm's length but at the same time um, I got involved with the Whole Earth Catalog, which was a publication that did user written reviews, and uh, uh, and it was part of the kind of the hippie movement where we were trying to make uh, very select, appropriate technology. So we were trying to use technology that was appropriate to what we needed and no more. And um, from that came uh, my migration into my experience online very early in the 1980s. And there I saw a different facet of technology. It was, it was very communal. Um, it, was, it seemed very appropriate, and yet it was very high tech. And that began to change my mind about what I thought about technology. And as that kind of expanded, Wired started, I, and eventually I became very involved with high tech and now run a, a website called Cool Tools where there's lots of tech. And throughout that, I was getting the idea that maybe technology – was something we wanted more of. And so um, I wrote the book to kind of answer my own question about this, which was, what do I really think about technology? Is there a theory or a framework for uh, helping me decide what I should think about it? So it is kind of encompassing the past, the present, and the future of technology as you see it. But I would like to go a little deeper and ask you, what is the motivation? Why would that question be so important for you or for anyone else for that matter? What was your specific personal motivation to begin searching for an answer? Well, um, if, you, if you think about it, um, uh, to technology is without a doubt the most powerful force on this planet. It it's, has a planetary scale effect in terms of climate change and the way that we humans have used our tools to alter both the face of the earth and even our own bodies. And so um, with that, you know, and then we're surrounding ourselves with all this stuff. We spend most of our day in some ways dealing with technology, in contact with technology, and many of us are involved in making more of it. We're inventing it. We're spending our time trying to sell it or buying it. And I was just asking myself, what is all this stuff? What does it mean? What I mean, is it good? Is it 
uh, how does it relate to nature? How does it relate to the cosmos? What is the significance of this? And you know, if we look at it in the future and to, to where it's going, um, that might be one way we can answer the question of like, well, okay, here we are in 2010, we have all this technology. In another thousand years, or even 500 years, or even 100 years, if we had a thousand times as much, is that good? And so I, I think this question of trying to answer the and delve into the nature of it is is actually vital because there's it, it's so important in our lives. So in that sense, would you say that um, your motivation was a scientific curiosity? Was it sociological? Was it ethical in the sense of trying to figure out whether technology brings good or bad dimension to our lives and our existence? Was it religious? I would was say it, it was all... I, I would say it was all the above. I would say basically we have no theory. Mm -hmm. And if you ask, if you ask you know, ethically, spiritually, scientifically, culturally what technology is there's really kind of no answer it's like well it's just one thing maybe it's things that we invented in our minds but there, there there's no there's no framework no theory about evolution it's like having biology without a theory of evolution it's like well it's just one organism after another and here we had the same thing it's just more stuff and i think that it was more than that i think it i think it it uh, my suspicion was is, is that there was something greater than just one invention after another, that there is a framework, a a, um, a basis, a logic, a, a meaning, pattern or tendency. a pattern, something yeah. that unifies this. And most importantly, what I discovered is that it connects it actually to life. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you another cotangent question here, just to try and understand your sort of foundational starting points here. Um, I think it was your, the article about you on Wikipedia, and I don't know how accurate it was or mm -hmm. not, but somewhere... You don't believe everything Wikipedia says? <laughs> well, I'd like to double check and cross-reference <laughs> it. I, I do read it, but I'd like to cross-reference it usually. Sure. Um, and I find it gets more and more accurate than say it was 10 years ago when it was just horrible. Um, but it says that you're a devout Christian. Yes, that's true. Now, that that came to me as a as a huge surprise. Even after uh -huh. I've read like a 400 page book written by you <laughs> on the topic of technology. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so for me, the, the, another interesting dimension of you and the book and the sort of interplay between the two was. How do you reconcile your religious beliefs uh -huh. with the question that you ask and with the sort of intellectual child that you gave birth to? And, right. I mean, do you have to at all reconcile it? Are they perfectly compatible or is there some friction or how is that working out? I, I, I don't feel any friction between that. I mean, I, 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 I think that... Um, uh, I, 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 I think that the it's called the spiritual dimensions of technology um, are in line with uh, with the moral dimensions, with the cultural dimensions. And so from my mind, even though I didn't spend a lot of time talking about the spiritual dimensions, I don't I don't see any conflict with the scientific dimension uh, of technology. So I'm happy to talk about the spiritual dimensions if you want to go in that direction, but I don't feel that they're in any conflict with the scientific or the ethical or the moral dimensions. Well, I'd like to cross over different disciplines and try and sure. connect a, big, a bigger picture both uh -huh. of us as, as beings and, and of our subject of interest. Sure. Um, and in that sense, so, so you don't find a, a contradiction between, say, genetic engineering or stem cell research, or advanced robotics and nanotechnology, or even the so-called designer babies with advanced, uh -huh. you know, or chosen right. genetic traits before their birth, etc. You don't find any contradiction with your religious beliefs there? No, no, not at all. In fact, I, 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 I think that what's important to understand, of course, is that um, all these things that we just that you just mentioned, I, I think, are all inevitable technologies that are going to come down, mm -hmm. and um, 
uh, we as humans, we have we have created our own humanity. We 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 have in you know we through our minds have invented ourselves and have created humanity. So even humanity itself is is a, is a technology. And what we're standing on right now is not a fixed it's not a fixed entity. I mean, in, in the book, I talk about the fact that yeah, yeah. we are a process. And so um, I actually tweeted that we are a process and not an entity. Right. That so, was one of my favorite quotes. Right, and and so. Um, p part, and I, I even talk about in the fact that the Amish have a kind of a very stationary, static view of human nature that it is fixed. And I think that is one of the big differences. Um, and there certainly are a lot of religious people who who believe in the idea that there's a sacred, fixed human nature. Especially in Christianity, uh, I would say. Especially in Christianity, exactly right. Although I don't see any, uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't think that's actually necessary. To, to believe that. And so um, the uh, idea that we are not just trying to figure out who we are, but actually trying to figure out who we can be, mm -hmm. that is, to me, um, that's, you know, th th that's an assignment worthy of a great God. You see, I, I agree with everything you say. I, I love your book. I agree. And, and your, your approach and sort of... Uh, theorizing or stylatizing, if I can say, putting uh -huh. uh, technology in a certain kind of a t tendency and explaining it uh, resonates deeply with me. And yet I find it very contradictory with, with the history of almost any religion, especially Christianity. I mean, with, with, with especially, you know, ever since even before the time of Galileo, the church had issues with sure. both technology and progress. And, sure. And so for me that was almost shocking yeah yeah you know i mean i think the whole thing about belief systems whether it's christianity um muslim jewish or atheist is mm -hmm. that um people do all kinds of things in the name of that that don't necessarily to me represent the entire um spectrum of all those who follow it so um the, the, what has been done i mean what atheists have done doesn't represent what all atheists believe, and I think the same thing about what's been done in the name of Christianity does not represent actually the inherent uh, essential beliefs of of that either. And um, you know, I, I I don't think it's necessary for me to necessarily in my book apologize for everything that's been done in the name, but I I, I do think that um, it's important to realize that. The reason why I think Christianity has has lasted for two thousand years is that there's probably a lot more going on there than what appears in, say, you know, the Tea Party Republicans. <laughs> it's you know, I, I think there there is there is something there. At the very least, I would say yes. I agree <laughs> entirely with you on that point too. Even though I I am more of an agnostic on a good day, and on most days I'm actually an atheist, right. but I agree right. entirely with you.